What's up guys, War here. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna go over followers. My follower that I use in what I consider one of the best setups for followers inside of Diablo 3. So let's get right into it. All right, so if you guys don't know what followers are, is that while you're playing the game, followers are a companion that you can get to, that you can hire to uh, aid you throughout the entire campaign when you're doing adventure mode, etc. Now, I will say right off the bat that, you know, having a follower, you can only have it in solo mode. It does not work in groups. You only can have a, a follower while you're playing solo. But you have three different ones you can pick from. You have the Enchantress, the Templar, and then you have the Scoundrel. And all of them have different abilities and different things that they do. Okay? So... You can pick one, you can you can unhire one and hire a new one, you can unhire a follower and rehire the same one, it does not matter. Any and all equipment that are on followers will stay on the follower until you, you know, change them out or get rid of it. Even if you unhire the follower and I hire the Templar and my Enchantress is still here, you can still see that the Enchantress has all the equipment on there. So my Templar has nothing, we'll rehire my Enchantress and boom she has everything so there's a couple different reasons why you would pick certain uh followers for certain things that you're going to do in the game we're not going to go over everything in too much detail so there's a couple things one there's going to be t16 pushing uh build setups for the followers there is gr pushing and gr speed setups for your followers now a lot of the the equipment doesn't change too much so I'll, I'll i'll try to make sure that i mention a couple things but in general the followers pretty much stay the same so you got to ask yourself why would you want to have a follower well they have a lot of abilities as you can see here that really help your character as well as the follower to do certain things so if we can here let me see if i can um swap over to this let me take this uh this part away guys so you can see so as you can see, there's a lot of different abilities here that you can use for the follower. Now, you have each follower has a, a primary equipment. One is going to be the the focus for the enchantress. Then there's the Templar book, and then there's the scoundrel uh, icon that you can have for it. And uh, that'll go into the slot. Each follower has one, and then you have uh, abilities that you can pick for the follower. As you level up, as you can see, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now, you need to pick very carefully about which ones that you're going to keep because you can't unlearn them, but you can change them. So, like, you can't unlearn it, like, and just not have the ability once you pick it. But once you pick it, you can interchange this and just change out the abilities based on what you're doing in the game. So, now, with the legendary Enchantress focuses, there's three different kinds, really, but you're only picking between two. You have the one where your follower can never die, and then you have one that gains access to all skills. Now, your follower can die if you do not have this uh, equipped to your follower, and if the follower dies, your the follower will die for 20 seconds and then respawn on you, okay? It'll follow you wherever you want to go. Now, a big reason you want followers is because they share 20% of their experience, their magic, and gold find to you, which is a huge boost in Diablo 3 if you're a solo player. So that's the biggest reason why that we always use a follower. The next reason is, is a couple seasons ago, they did a complete rework of the follower, okay? And they put a lot of items that have that emanate ability on the item, which means that the ability on the gear emanates to you. So for example, with the Nemesis Bracers, Shrines and Pylons will spawn an enemy champion. So when you're out doing GRs or you're just hitting T16s and you're hitting Shrines and or Pylons, this spawns an enemy champion before you had to have this equipped on your actual character, which made setups very, very hard, okay? And not as efficient as they are today in Diablo 3. But now you can have it on your follower and it'll work just as good. So now you put Nemesis Bracers on your follower and every time you hit a Shrine or Pylon, it spawns enemy champions, which helps you get through the GRs even faster. So 
there's a lot of gear pieces that we're going to go over but essentially we have the followers set up to aid us in every aspect of the game okay the setup that i have here i think is the best one i don't do a whole lot of uh gr pushing i do do it here and there and i'll try to mention a couple items that you're going to want to switch out but right here this is the best build for t16s rifts and then we're going to swap out one item or excuse me two items for speed grs okay so let's get into the gear the standard setup for the gear for a follower is the cane set as well as the sage set okay the reason for this is because the sage set gives us double death breaths that drop so while you're doing your t16 stuff you get double death breaths and then also the cane set is going to give you a, a 25 percent chance for greater rift keystone so you get more of those but the bigger thing is is you get the attack speed buff as well as the experience buff remember i said uh, followers share 20% of their experience gain. So uh, the 20% from here plus the gem at 41% gives your follower a lot of XP that's sharing over to your main character. So those are the two main sets that you're going to want to have on your follower at all times. The next big ones are all the emanate gear. Okay, we have Nemesis Bracers to spawn uh, champions on shrines and pylons, the flavor of time for pylon effects to last twice as long. And then uh, homing pads for when you're town portaling solo so you can't be hurt. And then gloves of worship, which shrine effects last for 10 minutes, which is huge, especially in your T16 grinds. And then avarice band for each time you pick up gold, your gold and health pickup radius is one, uh, increased by one for every 10 seconds, stacking up to 30 times. Uh, and though, and that is it for your main eminence abilities, okay, that is on gear. Those are the standard ones. Now, Nemesis Bracers, Flavor Time, Homing Pads, Gloves of Worship, and Avarice Band are the main ones. You can change these out if you really want, but I would always keep these two on here as well as the Gloves of Worship and Avarice Band for T16. Next, we have Ring of Royal Grandor, which helps on the follower. It's not, it doesn't emanate to you, but it works for the follower, which is why we're able to run both the Cane set as well as the Sages set. Last, in the weapon slot, there's a bunch of different options, but you want this for the increased attack speed here, and on the life per hit, it allows your follower to stay alive, because we like to use all of the access to skills. I do change this out when I'm doing GRs to the follower can't die, but in general, this is the one I really, really like, because if you gear your follower well enough, most of the time they don't die, especially if you're just destroying um, you know, all the floors and all the GRs and all that good stuff. Next in the chess piece, guys, you have a couple options here. You can do Tal Rashes, which is really good for attack speed, or you can do the gold skin, which is great. You could even do uh, Aquilas if you really wanted to. But I like this just for more chance for more gold. This is all about T16 right now. So that is the standard setup. We're going to look at some changes here at the end for uh, GR pushing um, or even GR speeds. But let's get into the abilities here. This is the second biggest reason why you have a follower is all the abilities that they have, guys. So you have Charm, Temporal Pulse, which deals more damage. Uh, you have Amplification, which gives a static elemental damage bonuses by 10%. Uh, reduced cooldowns by 10%. Erosion, Power Shield for you and your follower. And then every uh, follower, all three have a Cheat Death, which I definitely recommend on any build that you're doing. But the reason why these skills are so important is because the skills that they have and the percentages on those skills translate over to you. So, for example, with the Enchantress and the main reason that I run her is because Profit Harmony <clears throat> reduces the skill cooldowns by 10% based on Enchantress's intelligence. So your character is getting a 10% cooldown reduction, which will help you spam all of your abilities even faster this is huge and the main reason why i run this now how do we get to 10 percent 10 percent is based off the followers main stat ability for the enchantress is intelligence you have to get the main stat to twenty five thousand for these skills to be maxed if it's less than 25 i'll show you i'll take this off and now our main stats twenty two thousand. so now school or uh cooldowns for skills is only nine and a half percent but if we put this back in, now we're at 10%, which is huge. It isn't too hard to get to 25% uh, 
or 25k uh, main stat on a follower you put the gems in you make sure everything is intelligence is close to max as possible and then you should be able to get there if you really wanted to feel a little weird you could do the um guardian set which will give it a 3.5 times on your main stat and you can get to 25k no problem so that is the biggest reason that we we want a follower on our team as well is the stats here i believe the templar has some really good stuff for crit chant or excuse me uh for strength and damage bonuses and then the scoundrel has really good stuff for crit chance um which is just great but i like the enchantress mainly because of the cooldown excuse me i want to be spamming all my abilities all the time no matter what so after that guys you have all your your stuff set up you get these items very very easy you can change over the main set if you want or re-roll these whatever you need to do um now when it comes to gr speeds and or pushing so in speeds we want to swap avarice band for oculus ring same thing with gr pushing because we want the more damage right now we're not going to be concerned about the uh double death's breasts so you have a few options here okay so if you wanted to in the boots you could put ice climbers on your follower um in the belt you could put cord you could put guardians uh you could do anything like that which is really really solid for your follower um those items are very very good to swap out but you always want canes for the attack speed and the um experience bonus to your character um, those are the main things that i would swap out mostly what i do guys is i i just swap out avarice band for oculus ring and then i put ice climbers sometimes on my follower just to swap it out but most of the time i just leave sages on there because i'm doing speed content so i'm just slashing through everything anyway so having the ice climbers on there really doesn't change a whole lot but that's the main changes that i would make for uh gr speeds or and or gr pushing there's a lot more things that go into it that you wanted to, that you could do like you could take canes off and put blind faith in there or even on the belts if you're running a necromancer you can have court of the sherma which has a chance to blind stuff and slow stuff which procs your um crisman sentence which is really great but you have some flexibility there but i'm going to tell you right now guys this is the main setup that you want and if you get the ring slots on here you just fill those with your gems inside of your follower you want the main stat gems on your character or on the follower at all times to help keep them alive and then in your helm you always want to run the ruby for exp so that is a quick overview of followers what they do why you want to have them and then this is my personal setup for the follower uh when i'm playing t16s speed grs and then uh you know just normal riffs so that's it for today's video guys if you guys did enjoy it make sure to drop a like if you guys are new here be sure to subscribe all the uh you know the support has been absolutely fantastic i do want to give a big shout out to it's bobby that came into the stream which is linked down below guys definitely asking about followers and videos i didn't have one so i wanted to make a video for you guys uh for the community so if you guys have any suggestions on stuff you guys want to see me do please let me know down in the comments let me know also too guys if you have a weird follower setup or maybe if you didn't know or some things that you might do for your follower or if this video really helped you with your follower in diablo 3 let me know down in the comments and that's it for me warlock guys i'll see everybody in the next video and as always stay gaming Catch you in the next one. Peace.